Let us look at another example of forecasting. In this example, we will focus on exponential smoothing with the measurement of error. The monthly demand for units manufactured by the Maxus Manufacturing Company is given to us. For the month of May, the demand was 100. For June, 80. July, 110 and so on. So this is nothing but the actual demand for these months. Now what we are being asked to do is use the exponential smoothing method to forecast the number of units for June till January. So we have the actuals but we want to find out what would be the forecast based on exponential smoothing method. And we have to do that for months June, July, August, September, October, November, December and Jan. The initial forecast for May was 105 units. So the forecast for May has been given as 105 units. And the value of alpha is 0.2. B calculate the absolute percentage error for each month from June through December and the mean absolute deviation and mean absolute percentage error of forecast error as of the end of December and C calculate the tracking signal as of the end of December. So let's try to solve this example. So this is the information that has been provided to us. I have listed months from May through January. We have been given the actual demand for May through December. And we have been given the forecast for the month of May. We have also been given the value of alpha which is equal to 0.2. Now let's note down the formula for calculating forecast using the exponential smoothing method. So as per the exponential smoothing method, forecast for period T is equal to the forecast for period T minus 1 plus alpha into bracket, the actuals for period T minus 1 minus the forecast for period T minus 1. So basically if we have to calculate the forecast for June, what we need is the forecast for May and the actuals for May along with the value of alpha. So let's start calculating. So forecast for June will be equal to the forecast for May which is 105 plus 0 0.2 into bracket the actuals for May which is 100 minus the forecast for May which is 105. So let me pull my calculator here. So we'll first calculate the bracket which is 100 minus 105 then we'll multiply this with 0 0.2 and then add 105. So the forecast is 104. Let's move to the next one which is July. So this will be equal to the forecast for June which is 104 plus 0 0.2 into bracket 80 minus 104. Now this was 104. So 80 minus 104 multiplied by 0 0.2 plus 104. So this is 99.2. So this is 99.2 which is which can be rounded off to 99 and we can note the same here so 99 
so here we got the rhythm right so basically taking the previous period and actuals minus the forecast so 110 minus 99 multiplied by alpha and then plus the forecast which is 99 so let's do the same for August without writing it down here directly on the calculator 110 minus 99 multiplied by 0.2 plus 99 so 101.2 so we can round it off to 101 now you can do it two ways you can either round off the values and then calculate the subsequent values using the rounded off number or you can continue calculating with one decimal point if you calculate with one decimal point the calculation may be a little more tedious but it may be more accurate so that I'll leave up to you now forecast for September so 115 minus 101 multiplied by 0.2 plus 101 so 103.8 and let's round it off to the next number which is 104 next 105 minus 104 multiplied by 0.2 plus 104 so 104.2 we'll round it off to the number 104 next for November so 110 minus 104 multiplied by 0.2 plus 104 so 105.2 so let's round it off to 105 next 125 minus 105 multiplied by 0.2 plus 105 so 109 And for January, 120 minus 109 multiplied by 0.2 plus 109. So 111.2, which can be rounded off to 111. So we have calculated the forecast for the months of June, July, August, September, October, November, December, and January using the simple exponential smoothing method. So that completes part A of the question. Now part B of the question says that calculate the absolute percentage error for each month. So absolute percentage error for each month from June to December. and then calculate the mean absolute deviation and mean absolute percentage error as of the end of December. So this too is for December. Now first we have to find out the absolute percentage error for June through December. Now again this is absolute percentage error this is not the mean absolute percentage error. So what is absolute percentage error? So the absolute percentage error will be first we have to find out the error and error is the actual minus the forecast for period T. We have to do the percentage so this we have to find a percent as compared to the actual forecast and percentage means multiply by 100 and we have to take the absolute value of this now the actuals cannot be negative and 100 is not negative but this value actual minus forecast can be negative so we'll take the absolute value of this so first let's find out the error which is AT minus FT right so we have completed this part AT minus FT then we have to take the absolute value so absolute value of AT minus FT which is the error and then we will find out the absolute percent error 
which will be a t minus f t taking the absolute value of this divided by a t multiplied by 100. Now we have to calculate these from June to December. So for June a t minus f t is minus 24 For July, 110 minus 99, which is 11. August, 115 minus 101, which is 14. September, 105 minus 104, which is 1. October, 110 minus 104, which is 6. For November 125 minus 105 which is 20. For December 120 minus 109 which is 11. Now we have to take the absolute value. So absolute value means that we have to ignore the sign. So negative becomes positive. Positive remains as is. Next we have to find out the absolute percent error. So for June this will be 24 divided by the actuals which is 80 and multiplied by 100. So 24 multiplied by 100 divided by 80 this is 30 percent then 11 multiplied by 100 divide by 110 so this is 10 percent next is 14 multiplied by 100 divide by 115 so this is 12.17 we can round it to 12.2 percent next is 1 multiplied by 100 divided by 105 so this is 0.95 we'll round it off to 0.9 percent next is 6 multiplied by 100 divided by 110 so 5.45 so 5.4 percent next is 20 multiplied by 100 divided by 125 so this is 16 percent and for December 11 divided by 120 multiplied by 100 so 11 multiplied by 100 divided by 120 so this is 9.16 let's round it off to 9.2 percent so we have found out the absolute percentage error for June through December. Next we have to find out the mean absolute deviation. So let's see what is mean absolute deviation. So mean absolute deviation. Deviation is AT minus FT which is the error. And the absolute value of this. So the absolute value. And since we are calculating these for multiple periods so we have to take the sum where t equals to 1 through n where n is the number of observations that we are considering and since we have to take the mean so we divide this by n now we have already found out the absolute value of at minus ft for june through december and here we are considering n as 7 that is June through December only so 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so we have already found out the AT minus FT the absolute value of this for individual periods now we have to take a sum of all of these so let's add these up so 4 plus 1 5 plus 4 9 plus 1 10 plus 6 16 plus 1 17 one carryover, two plus one three, 
plus 1 4 plus 1 5 plus 2 7 plus 1 8 so the value of mean absolute deviation is 87 divided by 7 because n is 7 so this is equal to 12.4 next we have to find out the value of MAPE mean absolute percent error so this is equal to so first is the error that is AT minus FT the percentage value divided by AT the absolute so we have to take a sum of all of these T equals to 1 through N multiply this by 100 and divide by N because we have to take the mean so we have already found out this part for each of the periods now we have to take a sum of all of these so let's add these up so 30 plus 10 plus 12.2 plus 0.9 plus 5.4 plus 16 plus 9.2 so this is 83.7 percent 83.7 percent so the numerator is 83.7 denominator is 7 so this becomes 11.9 percent so this is the value of mean absolute percentage error so here we have completed part b now let's move to part c which is calculate the tracking signal as of the end of December so C is to find out the tracking signal now tracking signal is nothing but the ratio of running sum of forecast error divided by the MAD now we have found out the value of MAD in the last step which came out to 12.4 and we have to find out the value of running sum of forecast errors now running sum of forecast error is as the name suggests the sum of forecast error which is equal to sigma at minus ft where t equals to 1 to n so what this means is we have to take the sum of all these values with the sign as they are so this is not the absolute value this is the as is value so let me pull my calculator here so 24 negative plus 11 plus 14 plus 1 plus 6 plus 20 plus 11 and this is equal to 39 so this value is 39 so our tracking signal becomes 39 divided by 12.4 which is equal to 